ride. Happy Friday and welcome to your Newsmax Daily for June 21st, 2024. Friday, June 21st has a really nice ring to it for some reason. I think it brings back memories. When I was a kid, this was around the time that school in New York would be ending. In many other states, it's already the middle of summer break. Here in Florida, school starts back up like on August 8th or something ridiculous. But today is the first official day of summer on the calendar. And appropriately so, it's National Flip-Flop Day. Not as in political candidates, but as in the ones you wear on your feet. Something that you will never find Tony Marino wearing on his feet. National Flip-Flop Day, among a bunch of other things on the calendar of made-up holidays, including National Selfie Day, which is likely to lead to a tragic death somewhere, Go Skateboarding Day, and Take Your Dog to Work Day. So enjoy any and all of the above safely. One week from today, next Friday, we'll be talking about what happened in last night's presidential debate. President Biden is now off the grid at Camp David. One would assume he's prepping whatever that may look like, for the upcoming debate. Laura Trump, uh, RNC co-chair, joins us now with more insight. You know, if if he brings up the the, the charges against Trump, he's opening himself up to all that corruption evidence uh, that's so vast and obviously brings Joe into it. But what do you you see as the strategy here on, on the Trump side for this debate? Well, listen, I think that this is really it's more than just Joe Biden actually being able to stand up for 90 minutes, you know, at a podium and and be coherent. Joe Biden has to defend his record, Rob, Mm -hmm. and his record is abysmal. I think that this is an opportunity for these two candidates to remind the American people about life when they were president. Joe Biden's president right now. We can look around and tell how bad things have gotten. And Donald Trump has a great opportunity to say, hey, remember when I was president and gas was $1.87 a gallon? Remember when I was president and we had a secure southern border, when we had peace agreements in the Middle East instead of wars in the Middle East? And I think that is that's the main strategy here. Of course, he's going into a hornet's nest. Of course, he's going into this knowing that they have set everything up for Joe Biden to to make it as easy for Joe as humanly possible. But I think the American people ought to expect more out of Joe Biden than just being able to hack it, standing up on stage and actually making a little bit of sense. He's got a bad record and he has to defend it. And then he's got to tell the American people how he sees the future of America trending. And I can tell you the American yeah. people only want a future with Donald Trump there. You know, there's, there's so many interesting things here because, I mean, you know, we, we know that the last time CNN held a presidential debate, you know, they, they, they snuck questions to Hillary. Um, <laughs> it, it, it seems almost in, unfathomable for me to believe that they're not going to try and, and get some kind of information about what's coming. Although I think the campaigns kind of know. But you also have I mean, there's there's not going to be a teleprompter. You know, Joe Biden. And I mean, I saw Anderson Cooper last night said it was outrageous for anyone to suggest that Joe Biden is getting juiced for these big moments in these big debates. If anybody watched the State of the Union and thought that Joe Biden was there just on his own bloodstream, I mean, you'd have to be out of your mind to think that they're not pumping him with something to get him ready for these things, because he just doesn't function like that. I mean, he he about exploded out of the room at that State of the Union. Um, So, I mean, this just it's going to be such an interesting night because, again, they they don't have a prompter. He's got to think on his feet. It's one thing to get up there juiced up and just read the lines. Right. I mean, he's going to have to actually think and he's going to have to adapt when Trump hits him with something he's not expecting. It's going to be interesting. It it will be interesting. And I think the problem, too, is, you know, they try to deny that there is anything different about the Joe Biden we saw at the State of the Union. Rob, that's the problem. Is there such a vast difference in in Joe Biden, the guy who needs help getting into his car, the guy who needs a, a, a pull of people around him to take him to Marine One? All of a sudden, like you said, shooting through the roof, we obviously are going to be very paying very close attention to yeah. Joe Biden's demeanor on Thursday night. But yeah. I got to tell you, I think with as much as they've tried to stack the cards against Donald Trump, this is just more of the same. They yeah. have stacked the cards against this man from the day he announced he was running for president. And in so many ways, they probably have injured themselves here because they've prepared him for this moment right now when he has to face uh, Joe Biden. He's got to face. It's really a three on one situation. If you look at Dan Bash, Jake Tapper yeah. and Joe Biden yeah. versus Donald Trump. But he's ready and he understands the importance of this debate. And, and it's really not about him. This is about America. It's about taking this country back. And he's he knows exactly what he needs to do on Thursday night. I'm going to get my popcorn ready.
Laura Trump, co-chair of the RNC and daughter-in-law of President Trump on Rob Schmidt tonight. She mentioned fundraising, and I'll talk about some new numbers and information that came out yesterday in a bit. First, Jason Miller, Donald Trump's senior campaign advisor and a frequent guest on Newsmax, talked about some of the logistics of the debate. I think for Joe Biden, his staffers have to be very careful here because we know they're going to try to load him up and program him very similar to what they did with Crooked Hillary in 2016. But uh, I'll give you an example of how worried the Biden staffers are. We had a coin toss this morning to determine, would you go last in the closing statements, which you always want to go last. That's like just debate 101. You know that from like, you know, a hot runner for high school ASB. You want to go last to have the final word. Or you can pick the podium position. What side of the screen do you want to be on? The Biden folks won the coin toss and they selected the podium position. So we actually got the podium position we wanted for President Trump and we get to go second. I think the reason is because Biden is declining so much that they want to be able to spend this whole next week with him, have him locked in his spot so he doesn't have to feel like he's out of sorts or disjointed. And the difference here is that I I know all joking aside, the mainstream media is trying to set this up as if if Biden can stand upright for 90 minutes, somehow he gets a win. The issue here is can he defend his record on inflation, immigration, the world going to hell for 90 minutes? That's the key for next Thursday. And also their thing, too, if I'm Biden, first thing I do when I get up to that podium, I write down Thursday, June 27th, 2024, because you never know, Bianca. I'm not even sure he knows what day or what year no. it is. And all joking aside, did you check the coin? Did you make sure that both sides? Because you say they won the toss. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Uh, you never we got what we wanted, but yes, you know, yes, you yes. know what? It's, uh, they could have been pulling a cheap fake on us. <laughs> they could have been. That's what they like to do. And we know the border obviously is going to be or should be one of the big, big issues, at least for Donald Trump. You can't make this up. There's a VIP program. Mexican cartels are saying that they offer $6,000. They'd rather move people than drugs. They're making more money. I guess they're saying that if they bring a kilo of cocaine, Jason, it's $1,500, but a person's $10,000, 12000 15000 They come in. People like this beautiful mother now cannot raise her five children. And, I, you know, I don't know how that they could ever defend their record on an open border policy, which has brought criminals and also terrorists into our country. Well, they can. And this is going to be a major focus of the debate next week because Joe Biden has turned every community in America into a border community. Every community, every county in this entire country is now dealing with a fentanyl crisis. They're dealing with Biden migrant crime. We're seeing these horrific attacks over and over in states that, quite frankly, are thousands of miles away from the border, all because Joe Biden has reversed President Trump's successful policies and allowed these people in. And when I say people, that's being very generous. These are thugs, murderers, animals. They're the worst of the worst for other countries. And it all started, let's remember this, all started in 2019 and 2020 when Joe Biden said, if you're able to get into the United States, you're going to get amnesty. He may as well just send them uh, an invite letter. Yeah. Well, we know some of the folks with the ISIS ties were using the CBP app. So clearly it's been incentivized in many ways, shapes or forms. That is Newsmax host Bianca De La Garza with Trump campaign advisor Jason Miller. Comments from Utah Senator and anti-Trumper Mitt Romney surfaced yesterday with Romney again making it clear that he does not support Trump even now that Trump is the presumptive Republican nominee. Bianca spoke about it with Trump campaign National Press Secretary Caroline Levitt. I'd like to get your reaction to Mitt Romney, uh, who made some comments after sitting down with a meeting. I mean, we know that the Democrats will go after Trump. They'll call him a convicted felon. They'll, you know, use all the talking points here, say Biden's just cheap fakes. But here's a Republican Mitt Romney um, saying he's still anti-Trump and speaking this way to, of course, CNN. I didn't go there to support uh, former President Trump. I went there to listen to what he was planning on doing if he became president. With, with President Trump, it's a matter of personal character. Um, uh, uh, you know, I draw a line uh, and, and say when someone has been uh, um, actually uh, found to have been sexually assaulting, uh, that's, uh, that's something I just won't uh, cross over uh, in the person I would want to have as president of the United States. I mean, what does that serve? Uh, Donald Trump clearly trying to unify uh, the um, party, talking about policies for Americans. And then you have this. And and that is not actually even accurate, Caroline. Your reaction to Mitt Romney's comments there. 
Well, those are lies coming out of that man's mouth. And President Trump is unifying this great Republican Party. And if we want to talk about character, let's talk about the character of Joe Biden, who used his son, who was addicted to drugs as his bag man, sent him all around this world, engaging engaging in corrupt foreign business dealings to rake in millions of dollars for Biden's family. He sold out his access as a senator and as the former vice president of this country to enrich himself. Uh, Joe Biden also has a grandchild that took him years to even acknowledge. Joe Biden has a history of racist remarks. He supported segregation in this country. He is He's on the record saying many, many racist th- things throughout his entire career. Um, so if we want to talk about character, we should talk about the character of our current commander in chief, who is currently the weakest, most incompetent and corrupt president this country has ever had. That's Caroline Levitt, spokesperson for the Trump 2024 campaign, which is releasing a new ad, by the way, targeting Vice President Harris. Let's not forget that there will also be a vice presidential debate, or maybe two, whomever Trump finally selects as his VP will go face-to-face with Vice President Harris. A topic of conversation on American Agenda with Katrina Zish and Bob Brooks. Joining us now to discuss this and more, Nebraska Congressman and member of the House Armed Services Committee, Congressman Don Bacon. Congressman, thanks so much for being with us. We have to start out with the laugh, even though we know that that Kamala Harris ad is very, very serious. But I will say we know that former President Trump and his team, they are marketing geniuses. And uh, that's pretty good. And I mean, I've heard a lot of her word salad moments and they're spot on there. They didn't have to make anything up. She does have a lot of word salad moments. Uh, Some of her speeches are, especially when they're not scripted, are, you know, silly at the best. So I think it's a legitimate thing to make fun of. I think we should also be talking that she's the border czar, and she's and it's been the worst three and a half years ever uh, at our border. Thank you, Congressman Bacon. That is exactly what I have been saying for a couple of years now. Let's not forget who the border czar is, what she has done, and how she has never, never been held accountable for anything. Congressman Bacon also weighing in on uh, President Putin's trip to North Korea. We know you're on the Armed Services Committee here, just switching gears. We know Russian President Vladimir Putin wrapped up his trip to North Korea recently, signing off on a military agreement with his North Korean counterpart, the dictator Kim Jong-un. The deal is going to require both countries to use all available means to provide immediate military assistance in the event of war. Their relationship clearly is progressing. They are becoming stronger and stronger allies together. Why should this worry us here in the United States? Because it's not just Russia and North Korea. By the way, North Korea is arming uh, Russia with 155 millimeter shells and other kinds of weapons that they've stockpiled. So they've been helping prop up Putin in his war against Ukraine. But it's just not North Korea and Russia. You have China buying Russian gas and helping them out economically. Then you have Iran providing about 20 drones a day to Russia, these suicide drones. So we're seeing a growing alliance between Russia, China, North Korea, and Iran. And these folks do not like our individual liberties. They don't like the free market system. They don't like the rule of law. They believe in might makes right. Uh, they, they're a threat to their neighbors and they're working together. So America has to be the leader. We're the leader of the free world. We're the indispensable power, but we can't do it by ourselves. We gotta keep strengthening our, our alliances with NATO, Japan, Australia, hopefully over time, get India closer aligned to us because they see China as a threat as well. But this is growing, becoming the free world versus the dictatorships or the, uh, and the dictatorships want to control their neighbors. And that's what this world is uh, turning more and more to be. And we can't put our head in the ground and ignore that it's happening. It's it's happening whether we like it or not. So we got to be prepared. Congressman Don Bacon of Nebraska, a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Let's go back to campaign fundraising that I mentioned earlier. Well, actually, Laura Trump mentioned it. But according to a federal filing made public on Thursday, the Trump campaign has outraised President Biden's campaign by more than $60 million in the last month. Overall, In its entirety, the Biden campaign is still leading Trump, who is continuing to close the gap when it comes to fundraising, though, fueled by Trump's felony convictions. This, according to yesterday's filing. And I'm going to read you comments from the Associated Press this morning. Verbatim. 
At almost any other time in U.S. history, a presidential candidate would have been forced to leave an election after being convicted of dozens of felonies. But Trump's guilty verdict has instead fueled a fundraising surge that will allow him to ramp up advertising and swing state infrastructure just as voters begin paying closer attention to the election. That from the Associated Press this morning. And that is another thing I've been telling you for months now, that the average person does not pay nearly as much attention to politics, the candidates, the race as you do. Now, shifting to President Biden, media mogul, billionaire, and failed Democrat presidential candidate Michael Bloomberg, the former mayor of New York City, a Democrat mega donor, has apparently donated $20 million to support President Biden's reelection campaign. That is according to a Bloomberg representative. It was reported in the Washington Post and in the New York Times. Bloomberg himself, and you may recall, he spent like a billion dollars, I'm not exaggerating, nearly a billion dollars on his own failed campaign. But he issued a statement saying, I stood with Joe Biden in 2020, and I'm proud to do so again. And I'm going to say again that a vote for Joe Biden, Mr. Bloomberg, is a vote for Kamala Harris as president, because there is no way that Joe makes it past the first year or maybe even six months of another term. Standing with Joe is standing for Kamala. And that's scary. In other news, the union representing about 28,000 American airline flight attendants are preparing for a possible strike after negotiations on Thursday ended without any agreement. Apparently, the two sides have been negotiating for nearly a year now. And the union representing pilots is also in the news today and not for anything having to do with money, benefits, negotiations, what have you, but for wokeness. We get more from Mercedes Slap on the Right Squad. The union for nearly 80,000 airline pilots worldwide wants to phase out terms it considers offensive to women and the queer community. In it, it's in its cl- inclusive language reference guide. That's right. The Airline Pilots Association International, the union, suggests promoting inclusion and equity, like using preferred pronouns, avoiding generalizations such as ladies and gentlemen, or mother and father. The guide also urges members to avoid masculine generalizations like cockpit and instead using flight deck. And God forbid you say manpower. The union wants you to replace that word with staff, workforce, or even human power. I mean, I'm just like nauseated, like (laughs) listening to what these people are doing. We have planes like falling out of the air, you know, come on. And this is what we're worried about. I know. This was only a matter of time. Virgin Airlines kicked it off by Virgin Airlines. What are you saying? (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully no kids are watching. It's past everyone's bedtime. (laughs) Well, remember they they did the gender neutral uh, uniforms that flight attendants can wear. And, you know, pretty much every major media outlet now has a style guide that bans gendered language including terms like man-made or mankind or man-whole. This is just going to infect every part of American society, and we're all just going to have to get on board. But I, we have seen a bit of people moving away, like even academic institutions moving away from DEI and, and this type of approach. Why the, are the airline pilots so caught up in this world? I don't know, baby. How's your flight deck? <laughs> I think, look, I think all of this is just... Uh, captured by the same consultants, the same business consultants, uh, finance consultants that get into the boardrooms of every major corporation, every major union, every major entity. You'll see it's the same three kind of comms uh, outfits that are telling them this is how you have to do this. And it's always lagging. They're going to keep doing this until they realize the American people are ready to barf about all of this. Even gay people are ready to barf about this. People in protected classes like enough is enough of this insanity. We go all over the world and do these CPACs and the one response we get from people all over in all these continents is, what the hell is wrong with your country? Yeah. Like you're the only country doing all of this. We saw, uh, Daniel, that the Boeing CEO, the former Boeing CEO, testified uh, in front of Congress and apologized because of all the problems that they've had with the with their airplanes. I mean, don't you think safety should be the priority and not uh, taking away mother and father? Mercedes Schlapp, Matt Schlapp, and the usual right squad contributors. 
Chris Plant and the Right Squad featuring great group conversations with conservatives and liberals airs every weeknight at 10 o'clock Eastern on Newsmax. If you're not watching it, you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out tonight. Keep up with all of the news today and all weekend long with great shows like Wake Up America Weekend Edition, Saturday and Sunday, Saturday and Sunday Report, Saturday and Sunday Agenda, the Gorka Reality Check, and so much more. And make sure you're watching on the new Newsmax Plus. Or if you're not, simply go to NewsmaxPlus.com and get signed up. It includes all of your favorite shows and hosts with great commentary from people like Governor Mike Huckabee, former Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker, Professor Alan Dershowitz, and so much more. I'm Tony Marino. Thank you, as always, for listening to the Newsmax Daily. Share it with your friends and family. Do whatever it is you enjoy doing on the weekends and keep on fighting the good fight. News breaks every minute, every day. You need the app, the Newsmax app. Find it free on your smartphone store. Then watch us anytime, anywhere. It's our America. We conquered it. We built it. Great values like honesty and fairness. Great courage. A great nation needs a free press. Newsmax is it. 30 million Americans regularly go to Newsmax when they really need to know. They watch Newsmax TV at home on the free Newsmax app. They go to Newsmax.com. Start today. Newsmax is real news for real people.